Now that we've talked about sequences, I want to talk about a related topic, which is series. So first off, we're going to define that a series is the sum of a sequence of numbers. The notation here is we have the sigma notation from k equals 1 to infinity of a sub k. So we have the same general term that we talked about with a sequence. Then the, the difference here is the sigma notation versus the sequence where we had the curly brackets. So in a previous video, we looked at the sequence, which was the list of the numbers 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, etc. If I instead replace those commas with plus signs, this becomes a series. So I would again notice that the general term is 1 half to the k, but because we're adding these, I use sigma notation to represent that this is a series. Just like we saw with sequences, there's this notion of convergence versus divergence, and we're likewise going to consider that for series. But before I can get to that, we want to define a related concept of the nth partial sum. So the nth partial sum of a series is the sum of its first n terms. So it's pretty much exactly as it sounds. Notation-wise, we typically use a capital S sub n. And if I'm using my sigma notation, this just tells me to stop at the value n rather than going all the way to infinity. Same general term. And if I were to write it out term-wise, again, I would have a1 plus a2 added all the way up to a sub n, and then I would stop there. For the example we just looked at, if I have the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 half to the k, the nth partial sum would be the sum from k equals 1 to n of 1 half to the k, which is 1 half plus 1 fourth, etc all the way to 1 over 2 to the n. And notice with this, that's my general s sub n, but with this you could find, for instance, um, s sub 2, right? That would be 1 half plus 1 fourth. And we could say then that this is one, uh, 2 fourths plus 1 fourth, and we would get that s sub 2 is 3 fourths. So we could find the value of that finite sum. And that's really the advantage of the partial sum. Even if n were very large, if you had a lot of time on your hands, you could sit down and add up those n values because that's a fixed finite number of values. On the other hand, with an infinite sum, it's hard for us to think about how we could find the sum of such a series because that goes on forever. So really the connection here is we'd like to relate the series, the infinite sum, to this notion of the nth partial sum. And that leads us to our definition of convergence. We're going to say that a series converges if its sequence of nth partial sums, which I've expressed here in that curly bracket notation, converges. Otherwise, the series diverges. So this might look like it's uh, circular reasoning here, but remember, we've already defined what convergence for sequences means. So if we say that the sequence of partial sums converges, this means that we would need the limit of the partial sum. So I'm relying on my notion of convergence for a sequence. Convergence for the sequence with terms Sn means that the limit exists and is finite. And if we now sub in what S sub n is representing, this means if I take the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from k equals 1 to n of a sub k, that limit needs to exist and be finite. So that's another way to, to break this down about what we really need to find. And that's going to be throughout all of our discussions with sequences and, excuse me, with series. That's going to be the definition. The definition of convergence for a series means that if I were to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth partial sum, I should be able to show that that limit exists and find uh, that the limit is finite. The value of that limit is consequently the sum of the series. So that's something that we can take advantage of. Now, as we progress beyond uh, this, this section, we're going to see that it's not so easy to find a nice formula for S sub n 
which means it's not going to be so easy to find the limit of s of n. And in that case, I can't use the definition verbatim to, to find the sum of the series or show that it converges. And that's going to motivate what we're going to spend several lectures looking at, which are what we call tests for convergence or divergence. But what I really want to emphasize is that all of these tests rely on this definition and are connected to that. And so that's why this is such an important part of this unit. So let's look at some examples where we can use this directly. And moreover, what I'd like to really emphasize in that definition is the distinction between some terms. So I think one thing that is, is very natural to get confused about is the fact that we talk about a sequence of partial sums, S sub n, but on the other hand, we've also been talking about a sequence of the terms of the series, which are the a sub k. And they're obviously related, but we have to keep them separate. So let's look at an example. Admittedly, this is a kind of strange example because I wanted it to, to work out nicely. So um, I'm giving the general term a sub k, and I'm expressing it in a piecewise manner because we see that eventually all of the terms are zero. So to be clear, Let's first look at the sequence of the a sub k's. So using our curly notation. Now, just reading that piecewise definition, if I were to just list out the terms of the sequence, remember we put commas in between them, the first term would be 1, the second term would be 2, third would be 3, fourth would be 4, fifth would be 5. But as soon as I get to uh, greater than the fifth term, all of the terms become zero. That's what that piecewise defined function is telling me. And I'm going to put dot, dot, dot to indicate that that pattern of writing zero is going to continue indefinitely. This would be my sequence of a sub k's. If you were asked if the sequence of the a sub k's converge, then we rely on our definition from our sequences video, and we would find the limit as k approaches infinity of a sub k. Now this is a, a strange kind of sequence, like I said, so rather than do anything sophisticated, this is saying, is there a value that exists and is finite that these terms seem to tend toward as k goes to infinity? Well, yes, all of the terms end up going to zero, right? That's what happens indefinitely with this. So what this means is that the sequence a sub k converges, and it converges to zero. If I were then to not talk about the sequence, but instead the sum, then what we would have to look at is the sequence of partial sums. So let's think about what that would be. The partial sums, first of all, well, S1, that would be the sum of the first one terms, which is another way of saying it's just the first term. S2 would be the sum of the first two terms, which is 3. S3 would be the sum of the first three terms, which is 6. S4 is the sum of the first four terms, which is 10. S5 is the sum of the first five terms, which is 15, whoops, S6 would be the sum of the first six terms, but notice what's happening now. I'm still going to get 15, and in fact, any partial sum after this is still going to add to 15 because you're just tacking on another zero. So the sequence of partial sums I can write out now. Again, it's a sequence, so it's a list of numbers. That would be 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 15, 15, and so on. And that's just going to continue indefinitely. Notice that this sum, excuse me, this sequence is a different sequence than the one listed above. The terms of this sequence represent finitely many of the terms of the other one added together. And we can now decide if this sequence converges or not by taking the limit of the terms of this sequence. 
So our question here is, what happens as we send n to infinity? Now, I'm using n because that's the index I've chosen for my sequence here. Uh, because we view s sub n as the sum from 1 to n of a sub k, often it's kind of helpful to use a different index for that. But um, in particular, again, I can get this limit by looking at the terms. We see that eventually the terms are going to approach 15. The limit of s sub n then is going to be 15. So that means that the sequence of partial sums converges to 15. So this sequence also converges, but it converges to a different number than the original sequence did. The other thing we can say from this is that because the sequence of partial sums ex converges to a finite number, this means that the series, which would be the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of a sub k, likewise converges. And in fact, we can say it converges to 15. That's the sum of the series. Of course, this was specifically chosen so that it wasn't complicated to add those together, but I want to make sure this notation is clear because these distinctions are going to become very important for uh, most of the series we see. And to further emphasize that, let's look at one more example, and this is one we have seen. So we looked at the sequence already. So if I have a sub k, I want to think about the sequence of terms versus the sum of uh, these terms. Now, what we're going to see here is, first of all, I can list out the a sub k's. If I have this sequence, this is going to consist of terms minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, etc. If I want to decide if this sequence converges or not, I take the limit as k approaches infinity of minus 1 to the k. That limit does not exist. So that means that the sequence of a sub k's diverges. Now, let's think about the partial sums. I'm going to kind of jump right into writing the sequence, but let's think about it. The first partial sum would be equivalent to the first term, minus 1. The second partial sum should equal minus 1 plus 1, which is 0. Third partial sum should be minus 1 plus 1 minus 1, so it's negative 1. The fourth partial sum would be minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1, 0. And now I start to see this pattern. If I add up an odd number of terms, I get minus 1. If I add up an even number of terms, I get 0. So this pattern continues. Now if we take the limit of the terms of this sequence, this likewise does not exist. Importantly, it is a different sequence than what we wrote for a sub k, but it has the same problem that it oscillates. The limit doesn't exist. So this, by definition, means that the series, which is the sum of these terms from k equals 1 to infinity, diverges. Again, the intent here is to distinguish between these two types of sequences, which are very much related. And one last thing I do want to point out here uh, that is not yet clear, but will hopefully be later. It, we see here that, <clears throat> excuse me, that having uh, that my two examples, the behavior of the sequence and the behavior of the sum with regards to convergence were the same. That is definitely not always the case. So it's not going to be enough for us to say that a sequence converges to be able to say that the sum does. If it were, we wouldn't have to have all of these different tests to consider, which are much more complex than simply taking the limit. So that is just a coincidence with these examples. And in particular, very soon we're going to focus on what we can say by looking at the limit of the terms, if anything, 